Back in early 2015, I fell in love with the chateau I found online. I then had to convince my other half to give up our London life and move to rural France. To my surprise, she said yes, and a year later said yes again at our wedding at the chateau we now called our home. It's just us two and our husky lightning. And now, of course, a few animals who seem to have joined us along the way. It's such a beautiful place to live, so we decided to share it with everyone. It's obviously a lot of hard work for just us two. It's not always a fairy tale, and we don't always get it right. But it's all fantastic fun along the way, as we bring this chateau back to life for others to enjoy as much as we do. Follow us, Angelina and Phil, along with the highs and lows of our Chateau life. It's a nice sunny day and the nature has decided to sunbathe and re-energise itself. The peacock, the fish and the ducks are all enjoying the day. So what we decided we're going to do this week is finally rescue that huge ancient duck house. Really wanted to do the shutters this week, but some of them cover up a false window and there's a gap behind and birds have started nesting in there. So I can't do anything to disturb those until they're up and fly the nest. So we'll leave nature to it and then we'll start on the duck house, which was going to be in the next few weeks. However, let's, let's make a start. This is very old and it's a big feature. It's actually in some of the old postcards and it's just got worse and worse and worse every year we've been here. So I want to save it before it gets unsavable. And what we're going to manage to do is um, clean up this entire bank. We've got to get rid of all of the ivy and everything in these banks. Uh, plant some nice, beautiful um, wild flower seeds in the banks and grass at the top. And of course, we need to do that and we need to do the duck house before any of the grass or any of the seeds spring up. Otherwise, we're going to be crushing those while we're doing it. So quite a big job. Some might say it's too far gone, but we like a bit of challenge. So we thought we'll start with the easy part, which is clearing this for wildflowers. I'm not going to throw them in just yet, but idea is to basically des absolutely decimate and hack away all the ivy using our push mower. But there's a trick to it. We got this uh, attachment for a normal, it replaces the blade on a mower with scarifying attachments, which is great for an average size garden, not quite so great for here we needed a proper machine but if you lower the the tines right down it takes everything out of the ground just rips everything up and loosens the topsoil which is kind of perfect if you want to clear loads of stuff to plant grass seeds for fresh or as we're going to do well, wild flower seeds so um we've got a really good use out of this we'll put it in a description in case you want to purchase that attachment and find it useful in your weed life and then we'll be planting some of these wildflowers look at that great selection phil is discovering that the little push mower keeps stalling for some reason it might be to do with the angle of the bank It decided it doesn't want to do any work today? Yeah, I know, it feels. You're quite fed up, eh? It's such a shame as it makes the job so much easier.
work on this angle unfortunately well you you made pretty good effort so that's probably enough look at it it looks great philip decimated this place with the machine everything's absolutely broken up into pieces it's brilliant great result now all i've got to do is finish off this little bank should be easy and i have just a tool for that oh how i've missed you Mwah. The biggest problem we have here is the amount of self-seeding trees along the banks. So our biggest job is usually trying to uh, be on top of that and try and maintain and take them out as soon as you spot them whilst they're young seedlings. So over here I have a conifer trying to grow self-seeded, a laurel bush and I think that's an acorn or something. Anyways, the point is this is what I have to take out in order to maintain the uh the bank and this one is all stone and obviously that's a tree root that grew through it and possibly pushed out the stones and they collapsed which is what you can see over here has happened where trees roots have pushed out all the stone into the moat so as you can see we've got our work cut out there's quite a bit uh, to clear for me um, from the little patch area that Philip managed to clear. So I'm going to get on with that. Okie dokie. Tiles off this side and the battening is gone. Now to pull apart a little bit more of it then to uh, change what we need to change. The other side seems okay, and given the difficulty in dealing with a roof that's over water, I'd rather not double the amount of work. So let's see what I can do. So that was day one progress. That's gonna be my day two progress. And Phil's progress is trying to remove the tiles from the other side of the duck house using the cherry picker because it's sloping into the moat so we have to be careful what have you done looks amazing doesn't it look at it all cleared i just got to finish that tree and then this is a good a day one progress and look I've discovered that there's a further like sort of wall in the water which is where i'm standing on which is so cool Here's day two progress from this tree to the second one. So that's great. <clears throat> and this is what I've got left. Just the last little section of overgrown stuff and tree that's gone in the moat. I look forward when this is all finished. Good going. So, Philly, where are you going to start from first? I'm starting from this side because I can get in here from this angle, but I'll have to go to the other side to get a longer reach to get to the middle pass. Thank God we've got a cherry picker for this job, eh? Do you think this side of the roof is in better condition? This side of the roof is in much better condition. But there's plenty of spaces where the wooden battening underneath has been destroyed. So it's easier to start, start from the beginning, take it all off, start again. Why do you think that side is in a better condition than the other one? Uh, this side is better because it had less branches and stuff fall on it. Ah, okay. The wood's rotten underneath where 
uh, tiles have gone over the, over the years from being hit by trees that are falling or branches and then they've got wet and rotted that's all okay all right well i'll leave you to that so that i can continue with weeding philly is now in the moat in his waders taking off the last tiles which is the last step on this duck house for the roof to be completely stripped off all the tiles Go on, take the last bits of the tiles off. I think most of these are held on with hopes and dreams. Mmm, I love a man in waders. Looks so sexy. Last one. Yay! Well done. Motivational drink time to celebrate. What Phil's going to do next is cut that branch that's leaning away over the moat because it makes the whole tree lean forward. And soon enough, if we don't cut it, it's going to fall over the moat and cause a lot of damage to the wall, possibly to the chateau, so that's what he's going to get on with. So Phil's going to start with the thin ones and then make his way closer. This job would not have been possible if it had not been for the cherry picker because it's very very risky and dangerous to do it otherwise in any other way we have many trees like that that require the heavy branches to be cut off this one for instance it's actually almost touching the chateau and if it were to fall down it will probably knock out the chateau And here is the finished result of the tree branch that's been cut down. Everything is in the moat, ready and waiting to be fished out. And the bank is looking clear also. Strong winds and heavy rains have arrived at the chateau. So our plans are being changed and we're going to have to come back to it when this is all gone and it's a bit safer. With all of the rain, the moat levels drastically increased and you can see here that it's just about draining away now because we've opened one of the outflows. We need to lift the duck house. It's obviously rotted at the front and tilted down with the weight of the tiles i have to lift it straight secure it back to the wall and then put bricks underneath the front of it having cut out the rot of the frame so it sits upright the only way to do this is either lift it with the cherry picker or get in the moat and physically lift it up while angelina's on the platform putting bricks under for the moment and none of this we particularly want to do under a fairly ill tree with storm winds so we're going to have to leave this until tomorrow
up to the big lake through our extremely overgrown tree-lined walkway. Let's not fall into anything. I've fallen over once already today. This is the big lake at the top. And this truly is stunning. That's the overflow from this lake. And this lake is what feeds the moat, which then in turn feeds the small lake on the way in. So it comes from this one. So that comes in over there, flows in this way. And there's the shatter behind those trees and the main lake over there where the outflows are. Here's some of those beautiful rhododendron from the driveway side. Beautiful, aren't they? And here's some of the purple ones. I do love these. I don't know if you can see Angelina's over there in a little purple top. And this is the bigger one of the two. That's also quite blocked up with sticks at the edge there. And this goes down goes under the driveway in a big tube and also comes out in the small lake in the front. And there's some of the beautiful pinky purple ones by the chapel. Rather overgrown of course. What are you doing? Here at Chateau de Vaillot I'm frequently the ancient moat plumber and today because it's been raining so hard due to the storms my outflow is blocked which is full of sticks leaves and any sort of debris and i'm obviously the the level is rising so i need to lower the water level before it floods some of the uh garden areas so my fre frequent visits uh, are thanks to uh, this little handy pickup tool just to get some sticks and stuff like that this is pretty much my regular job almost daily really that's a big pile of sticks but look at that that will definitely block any sort of outage or that stick right there look at that i can see the water flowing again oh sort of yeah it's not as fast but there is a lot of water i mean it's at its maximum it's just trying to push it any way it can and it has been known to be a lot higher like flowing over here so, you know. It took me about two years to unblock this ancient outflow. There is a bigger one, but it's not as good or quick at getting rid of water. And you always want to have plan B with water, especially if it floods the region. So this is quite important that this is clear and free flowing each time. The water section of the chateau is my department. Billy doesn't really get involved in this so it's up to me to make sure everything's free flowing and that I understand the logistics of the movement so next now that I've cleared the surface debris I need to actually drain it and this is my drain rod which is really really long it's about 15 meters Look at it, it's really flowing. So what Angelina is currently unblocking comes out in here. Which then drains into the small lake on the driveway. As you can see, this part of the chateau moat is really silting up. It's getting quite bad and there's not much space left for any water as you can see. We were always thinking about dredging it but it was a plan for the future. Unfortunately I think it's going to have to come a little bit sooner than we anticipated or the fish and all the nature here won't have anywhere to survive.
Wow. Oh. Yeah, see just how much is in here now. Yeah, sadly I can't help you because uh. oh, you're too far away. I, I might be stuck here for the rest of my life. Oh. Time to find a new husband then. No. Send. <laughs> send help. Send gummy bears. <laughs> I sadly think to, that our plan to dredge this in a few years is needing to be done a bit sooner. On to the next problem. Which is? If you come down here, I can show you. See all this rot? Yeah. That's making the entire thing tilt forwards, the whole structure. Yeah. Because this is rotted away, so there's you know that much that should be there. You should make mm. it upright. That with the weight of the tiles is making it want to fall in. And it's supposed to be screwed in and you know with massive coach bolts into the wall that's at the back to hold it, to tie it to something solid. But that's all come apart as well which means I actually have to repair the wall behind so there's something solid to tie it to. I can see some granite stones here actually. So originally I thought I'd get the weight of the roof off and then just get this lifted, cut away the rot and then put some bricks here to take, to take up the height. Okay. Which would also stop the bottom of these posts getting wet again mm -hmm. so they wouldn't rot but it's all coming away so i need to do repairs so we're gonna to have to see what i can do here we might have to rethink my original plan and it's certainly at least twice as much work as i thought in the first place yeah. oh well that's life let's crack on then okay let me just see if i how much <sighs> can hardly move in all this silt <laughs> So this is a lot worse than we originally thought. So if you see in here, well, that's the wooden peg that was used to secure this upright into here, into this joint. And the peg, is, not only does the peg no longer exist, as you can see, the actual wood for the, for the upright into that joint, nor everything around it, that doesn't exist anymore either. There's literally nothing inside. The upright, which is supposed to be joined into this cross brace, neither one is actually joined. They're just touching each other gently. Mm -hmm. There's just nothing left. As you can see, there's nothing holding it all together, which is a shame because it's beautifully constructed in wooden pegs, its original construction. That's what we're here, so that's okay. Let's see what we can save, eh? Yeah. And it's the same story on the other side. So they will need to be redone. I think we're going to lift the entire thing out from there onto the bank with the cherry picker. What's the plan? <sighs> the plan is... The cherry picker can handle 265 kilos quite happily in the basket but, and that's with the boom all the way extended which is quite thin metal if we don't extend the boom we can lift higher than that but i would have said this is less than 250 kilos anyway so what i'm planning to do is very gently lift this either lifting it upright so we can put it back into place and then deal with everything in situ or if it doesn't look like it's falling apart when it's being lifted up I might put it onto the bank and rebuild it on the bank and lift it back into place. Okay. Fingers crossed there.
it's should we just leave it there it's his new home it's fine yeah <laughs> new place but look at that leg this one's like a peg leg hardly anything when they should be that thick and this side is slightly better so all in just good nick of time so this is actually really well built which is why we can lift it with these massive coach bolts but lots of bits like this i think people have put it in for uh these are new these have been repairs to try to keep it upright and these are just screwed in so there's no real structural stability in this lot so i think lots of this is going to get taken apart but i can't wait to put it back together i'm really excited now <laughs> So guys, thanks so much for watching. The Duck House is a really important project to both of us and we're so glad we've got it started. As always, it's a lot bigger job than we first thought, but we've got used to that in the chateau. So in the coming weeks, that'll be, uh, that'll be finished off and carried on. I'd like a really big thank you to all the patrons that joined us in the last week. Thank you so much. Your help really is appreciated and it makes us feel a little bit of love. So. Thank you again. And um, if any of you want to become our patron, then we'll leave the link in the description below for you. And if you enjoy our channel, help us to grow by sharing our videos, liking and commenting. And if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe uh, button and don't forget the bell to get all the latest notification. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. See you later.